Ransomware ridden Florida cities are paying up, insulin pumps are vulnerable to potentially deadly wireless hacks, and Chronicle joins Google Cloud. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings! I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for July 2nd, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. It's time for a quick shout out, and this one goes out to Andrew, Sebastian, Aspen, Randy, Peter, Will, Diane, and Ryan, who joined the Patreon team this week. And if you are interested in supporting ThreatWire over on Patreon, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And now, on to the news. Another Florida city paid a huge amount to criminals in order to get their data back after a ransomware attack. The first was Riviera Beach, which paid up to $600,000 in Bitcoin to recover their data. The second happened last week to Lake City, which paid $460,000 in Bitcoin. Lake City's network was down for two weeks, at which time they were held at ransom for a huge Bitcoin payment. Landline phones, city emails, city networks to pay water and electric were down, and permits were unable to get accepted. Officials stated that the fire department and the police were not affected as they ran on different servers. Now, in the case of Lake City, insurance was able to pay for almost the entirety of the Bitcoin except for $10,000, and that 10 grand is coming from taxpayers. Another Florida city was hit with ransomware at the end of last week, and that city was Key Biscayne, which was attacked by the same ransomware as Lake City and was also infected in a similar way. An employee just happened to click on an attachment in an email that unleashed the malware. So will they pay up? That remains to be seen at time of recording. Now this brings up a very good debate as to whether or not paying the ransom should be considered. Law enforcement are very much against it for obvious reasons. Attackers may find it to be a valuable source of easy money. Ransomwares could increase and ransomware could become much more prevalent. We have seen these factors in recent trends in ransomware. Attacks on city governments increased from 38 reported in 2017 in local media outlets to 53 in 2018. This year alone, another 22 have been reported by media outlets. Ransomware used to be a lot cheaper, too. Atlanta paid $51,000 to unlock their data, and Baltimore's attackers wanted $76,000. But at the same time, analysts with Forrester Research are suggesting otherwise. According to their post, paying a ransom may be the best option if your business needs require it to ensure an optimal recovery path. And if recoveries from backups is complicated or scaling recovery is too unfeasible. Many in the security industry hope that city governments will heed this wake-up call and consider precautions. Are backup systems regularly checked? Are they redundant? Is there a plan of action for a worst-case scenario? Forrester does recommend having a plan of action which involves multiple responses. Having a cybersecurity response team and a ransomware specialist on call would be crucial, as the response team could potentially recover from backups, while the ransomware specialist may be able to crack the encryption or communicate down the deal with the attacker. Getting a valid decryption key and being able to test decryption on a file would be a crucial step as well before paying the attacker. Early trading and of course education for city officials and employees would also be an excellent step as ransomware is almost always caused by a phishing campaign. A little bit of training could end up saving thousands of dollars in the long run, not just for the city government, but also for taxpayers. On Thursday, the Food and Drug Administration issued a news release on their website detailing warnings about Medtronic insulin pumps. These are very small computerized devices that deliver insulin to patients throughout the day in specific doses. People with certain types of diabetes usually need these to maintain acceptable blood glucose levels. The insulin pumps have brought up concerns with cybersecurity and potential life-threatening attacks due to a vulnerability in the devices. The FDA warned that Flawed pumps include the Mentronic Mini Med insulin pumps, which are Mini Med 508, and the Mini Med Paradigm series. Up to 4,000 patients in the US use these, and a recall has been issued while they work to identify more patients. Now, luckily, Medtronic is provided alternatives that include enhanced built in security capabilities. The company is not able to update the insulin pumps adequately with a software patch or an update, so the FDA is helping to ensure patients get the 
new, more secure device that they need. The wireless communication between the insulin pump and other devices like glucose meters, monitoring systems, remote controllers, and CareLink USB devices, which plug into your computer, have a vulnerability that could allow an attacker to connect via wireless to a pump and change its settings. The attack, which is CVE 2019-10964, would need to happen locally within the wireless vicinity of the insulin pump, but it could lead to a life-threatening issue like hypoglycemia, high blood sugar, and diabetic ketoacidosis. According to the US CERT website, the pump's wireless RF communication protocol does not properly implement authentication or authorization. An attacker with nearby access to one of the affected insulin pumps can inject, replay, modify, and or intercept data. In the meantime, Medtronic advises patients to keep their pump serial number secret, don't connect to third-party devices, and keep the insulin pump within your control at all times. Now, unfortunately, Medtronic's lack of cybersecurity awareness with their legacy devices comes at a cost to the consumer. None of the replacements are free. Insurance may cover a new replacement, but out-of-pocket costs or a deductible may apply. Refurbs of the newer, more secure Mini Med 670G cost almost $400. And if you don't return the legacy one, you are charged 3,200 USD. Yeah, that's right. Due to the cost, it is likely that many of the vulnerable devices will remain in use, which will continue to threaten the lives of those diabetes patients. The FDA has determined that the attacks have not been used in the wild, but it is still seriously considered a high severity flaw. Before we hit story number three, I wanted to say thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. I have just added a ton of new perks, including a new goal for an audio podcast. Yes, it's true. So definitely check out patreon.com slash threatwire if you want access to all those brand new extras. Also, there is a brand new Patreon perk too that I really wanted to point out. For Turbo Panda patrons and up, you will receive a weekly newsletter detailing important security and privacy news from the past week. Since I only have time to cover about three topics each week, this is my way of bringing you more news in a very easy to read format so you can see exactly what I'm researching to find news stories to share with you. And also a big thank you to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos like this brand new one. I love them, so keep them coming. It's not very often that I talk about business mergers or changes in brands, but this one will likely make for some large changes for Google Cloud clients and customers. Alphabet, which is the parent company overseeing Google brands, announced through the Google Cloud blog on Thursday last week that Chronicle, which is Alphabet's enterprise security company, will be joining Google Cloud. Now, Chronicle was created out of the X Moonshot factory, which is also an Alphabet brand, where new technologies like Waymo, like like Google Glass and more are born, tested, and possibly released into the world. Chronicle was started by the former Symantec COO, Stephen Gillett, and their first tool was launched in March. The tool is called Backstory and is used for threat analysis. Companies can upload security data and analyze it against known threats to determine if there is any kind of malicious activity going on. Now, while the merger will not fully happen until fall of this year, Google Cloud CEO Thomas Curian hopes that this will Will add a powerful addition to their data offerings and give security teams a way to stay ahead by delivering more capabilities. Google Cloud also recently purchased data analytics provider Looker for 2.6 billion USD, so adding Chronicle will likely put them in closer competition to AWS and Azure for cloud security and data. And with that, do not forget to like and subscribe. I am Shannon Morris, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.